As someone deeply invested in AI assisted development, I think I firmly settled on Claude Code as being my chosen AI coding environment. So here's a list of things that I do to convert old hand coded projects into a Claude Code project. This was originally supposed to be called the lazy dev. So throughout this episode, you'll see a bunch of little nuggets to help you in your everyday use of Claude Code. Let's get into it. I'm inside of Warp here and I'm obviously going to launch Claude Code. One of the first things I'll do when I come onto a project, particularly if I've you know, been experimenting with another tool or, you know, someone's using another tool like Gemini, I'll say something like copy all Gemini MD files as Claude.md files. Let it do its thing, but please, can we agree on a standard at some point? I think VS Code, I've really primed to be able to do this as it's basically the foundation to all of this stuff. But if we can agree on a standard, that'd be great. Thank you. So what I like, it's actually creating a to-do list, updating those to-do lists and working through them. This is a really effective way to make sure that we're writing really effective code. And on an old code base, I get the AI to create a readme file and I mean you can do this your own way but saying something like uh, please assess the code base and create an up-to-date and accurate readme.md file and it will go ahead and it will just understand the folders and various things like that and create a readme file that normally reads in plain English you can probably adjust the prompt a little bit here to say make it easy to understand or highlight how to start the project or things like that oftentimes I've overwritten previous readmes because I've just let them rot a little bit and it's really handy just having those readme files and this is a nice quick way to do it so here we go it's created a readme so it's got a few things there, services offered. I mean, this is less important really because it's about my company. We've got the file structure here. We've got the WordPress stuff, technology stack. I would maybe want a little bit more information about how to actually start the project, but I think you get the point. So we can actually say yes to that and it will create it. Similarly, not really a lazy dev kind of hack here, but whenever I plan something, I'll always make sure to output that plan into a markdown file so that I can refer to it or let's say I use Gemini or something like that. I can actually refer to that markdown file and work on the task at a later date. Let's say I didn't have time to do it then. So these task lists are really, really important, especially the plan mode is really, really important and really helpful for making sure the job gets done properly. And similarly to kind of getting into old projects and things like that, I won't do it now but I know that there's a huge bit of JavaScript in this project. And in fact, the way it's working out, in fact, I've got an app.js here. Go into old files here. So you see this big long JavaScript, which does a bunch of stuff. And I'll ask it to add uh, descriptive comments to help understand this file. And once again, it's all about adding context and familiarization and things like that to the file that will help people in the future. It's all well and good asking AI to understand a file for you in that one instance. But what about the longevity of the, the files and things like this? So I'm just going to allow the changes here. It's starting to add some comments. There we go. And it's done. I'm going to compact that because I kind of want to keep the context of that file and what it's done. But what I want to also do is we might actually go into plan mode and I'll say, give me three ways I can refactor this file. I might even say something like, if it's fairly optimal, don't suggest if you don't need to or something like this but again it's kind of coming onto these old code bases just knowing that I might have rushed through things or not thought things out as well as I could have things like that but turning on plan mode giving some give me some insight give me some ideas about how I might refactor some of the code so here we go we've got a few uh, we've got three ways here that we can refactor the code it's just a nice way to breathe new life into old code bases by addressing maybe things you hadn't thought of in the past. And 
I'm going to do this one. Genuinely, I think using Claude Code as your Git management tool is also a great idea, particularly if you've got a task that you haven't cleared the actual context window of. You can use something like that to say, push these changes to Git with a relevant commit message. It will look at the Git history, summarize what's been going on again if you've got the history in the in the current context window you can say just push these changes and it will use those i think ultimately it's a great way to tidy up old code bases and a really clear git commit history and there we go it's kind of understood the history a little bit what the changes are and now it's pushing it up to git you might add to create a new branch you might already be in a new branch but just managing your git through the llm i feel like it does a lot better job than i do because i get lazy with it and that's cool i had a wordpress backup file in there that i forgot to add to git ignore just did it for me removed it from the cache added it to the git ignore it's what i would have done anyway so this stuff is getting so smart claude and many other ai clis and coding tools do really well with context Claude particularly uses the claude.md files and you can see these kind of peppered through where I'm keeping track of changes and things like that. And I mean, looking at this one, which is in the scripts folder here, it, we just start to describe some of these files, what they do. And here I've got an actual prompt here to say if any of the questions changes, then we need to adhere to a certain format and we need to be able to copy and paste this into some other file somewhere. I, I won't get into the nitty gritty of it, but it's, again, it's just giving the tool the context it needs, it's sort of adding little clues and tasks throughout the code that can really help you write more effective code. I wanna add one to the root here, which essentially adds this idea of memories. I'm gonna tell it that it should be constantly making suggestions on whether I should be adding things to claude.md files. So let's say something like, Consider the current task and whether the information learned can be suggested in a Claude.md file. Cursor has this idea of like memories. I think this is essentially what it's doing, but we're just saying, just consider whether this is something that we can add to a Claude.md file, whether at the root of the project or inside relevant files. I'm not really thinking too much about the prompt. You can refine this, but I think you get the idea that it's just telling it to take the current task, think about it for a bit. Is there any information that we can add to a claude.md file, wherever that might be, and suggest that change? So we're implementing our own memory feature here, which I think can be really, really important. And that's what I love about Claude files. It's, it's different from others because you can contextual, like as an example, I've got one inside the scripts file here, which contextualizes whatever happens inside of that scripts folder. If I'm outside of the scripts folder, then it won't, it won't take this into context. And given that Claude code has a fairly small context window, we're not bundling everything into the root context file. We're sort of breaking it out where it seems relevant. Now, if there are things that you do on a very regular basis, whack it in a commands folder inside of Claude code. Let's say implement feature. You have a certain way that you want to implement features and a certain you know format that you want them to follow. If we do this, restart Claude. Now, every time you type slash, you'll get those tasks or commands. Now you can see I've got some in the root of my user file here, so I can quickly do those. You might opt to do that versus a project, but if you have project specific tasks, I mean, the clues in the name, right? If you've got project specific tasks, you'll keep them in the Claude commands folder of your project. But if you personally do them on all projects, consider moving them to the root of your user. They'll appear here and then you've got that implement feature command and then say, do this X, Y, Z or plan around these. So so stay top of mind of what you find you're doing quite often and know that you have commands, your Claude MD files and the AI do things the way that you want to do them over and over again. That's the whole point in AI is to save yourself time. So that'll do it for this episode. If you learn anything, then please consider subscribing to hear the latest on AI and web development. And of course, let us know if you have any great tips to help me convert old projects to Claude code or lazy dev tactics. Leave them down in the comments below.
Thank you to all my Patreons and thank you to watching until the end. Until next time, keep on vibing.